three years ago, we saw the dawning of an epic knife, the Morgoth Berg. Today, we are going to be revisiting this very awesome knife and comparing it to competition and overall looking at what made this knife amazing. So, without any further ado, let's jump into this. While paling in comparison to the larger CRK Pacific, that doesn't take away from the simple and still very effective design of the Garberg. Through the years I've been using it, I've come to find that even though this is basically a featureless, really featureless knife, that doesn't take away from the fact of how good it is. The ergonomics are comfortable and leave really nothing to be desired with the multiple ways that you can hold this knife forward, backwards, however you need to hold it for whatever you're crafting. Overall, it's a small and lightweight package. The design is timeless. Or as far as the overview goes, that's all I really have to say about the knife. Now, let's jump into the three year pros and cons of this knife. So, I've always been kind of against doing reviews on knives that I haven't really used a whole lot, and it leads to the fact of not really knowing much about pros or cons of this knife. However, having used this knife now extensively for three years, as you guys can hopefully see by the amount of just beaten up this knife is, I have a lot of input and feedback to say about this knife as my dog aimlessly wanders right behind the camera. So let's jump into some of the pros of this knife in particular. So the first pro that I really have is, is spark throwing. This knife as it kind of was claimed to be, has a completely ground spine, so they actually took it to the grinder and ground it so that it throws really good sparks. Not to mention the spine, or the tang here, of this, this little back tang is also ground very sharply to be used for throwing sparks as well. Other pros that I have to this knife are its rust resistance, which isn't a super high uh, amazing rust resistance, certainly no CPMS 35 VN, but it's still, though it does have a little bit of rust on it, has more than surprised me in how well it does keep the rust away, especially when working in snowy environments like this. The next, pro, the next pro that I have to this is the fact that it is really utterly rugged. I think something that a lot of people have shown with this knife, especially when it first came out, is that you would be hard pressed to destroy this thing. It is so overbuilt and so rugged that it is very hard to destroy. And I love that so much in a bushcraft slash survival knife. The next point is the bomb proof materials. What goes into making that utterly rugged design is the fact that it has a very thick full tang piece of blade stock and then injection molded on top of that thick blade stock is this handle which means there's no pins there's no adhesive there's nothing that can separate this handle from this blade other than a grinder just grinding it right off so that means that that this handle it's not going to break it's not going to crack off it's not just going to pop off so i love the bomb proof materials of this blade the other thing I really like about it is the fact that it has a timeless design. This very standard, very old school kind of blade that has proven itself effective in hundreds of years of knife design still proves itself in the same design of the Mora Garberg. It's overall very timeless and this is the type of blade that doesn't rely on trends or hot new fads to prove itself it's going to be a knife that looks good a hundred years from now and even it looked good a hundred years ago lastly from the last part of the pros to this is the amazing ergonomics whether you're wearing gloves mittens or it's just your bare hands this knife doesn't have any painful jimping to hurt yourself on it doesn't have any it doesn't have any weird jimping in the handle. It's just a very plain, but also extremely comfortable handle. And it doesn't have any weird choils. So you're never gonna worry about if you have to hold it in reverse, if you have to hold it forward, if you have to hold it to the side or this side, it's going to be a very comfortable knife to use in sustained use. Okay, so that is my pros to this knife. 
So let's jump into the few cons. Now, this knife is such a good knife because it has far more pros to it than it has cons. So let's look at the cons. So the biggest con I have with this knife, and this is dual sided with both of the sheaths, but I don't like how this leather sheath has held up over the years. I gotta say it has done, I mean it's not a horrible sheath and it hasn't uh, broken completely, but one thing that I will say about the leather sheath is because they didn't put any rivet down here, the tip of this blade actually ended up coming out and sticking about a good tenth of an inch out of this uh, little area right here, which creates some really big hazards of you potentially stabbing yourself while you're wearing it, or stabbing yourself trying to grab the sheath, and it just created some really big hazards. So I had to kind of patch that, and I wasn't a big fan of having to do that. The other thing I don't like about the modular sheath is its sole is a modular sheath, however, it's kind of crappy design leads to, to the fact that you can only ever put either a belt loop or a little clasp to cover the knife. You can't have both of them on there and so it's really weird and I don't like that at all. So those are, that's the biggest con I have to the Mora is the sheath design is actually kind of weird because Mora usually is quite on point with their sheath designs making them very modular, very useful. But these ones just didn't last the test of time. So the other thing I have to say, and these are a little bit more nitpicks, but for me personally, I find the blade to just be a little bit small. I would have preferred something a little bit larger. However, I know many people will find the blade length to be what they want. However, it's just a personal critique. The other one that I have is the fact that the edge retention being that it is a lesser uh, super or not super steel but stainless steel you do have to find yourself sharpening this knife semi-frequently it's not super frequent but you will want to be prepared if you're going to be using this knife for any extended period of time to make sure that you understand you will need to be sharpening it so those are the three biggest cons that i have against the knife so now getting into competition like i mentioned one of the biggest things i love about this knife and i love talking about competition because this knife does competition in the cluttered sea of knife world that this knife the bushcraft knife world is this knife fills such a niche where there's nothing for the price point that really mimics what this knife has or for capabilities can do what this knife does so we're talking a 60 to 80 dollar price range nothing really matches the level that this knife has of ruggedness of usability for bushcrafting and comfort ergonomics all of those things bundled into such an affordable package for this knife really sets it in a league of its own and i think that that's so interesting because when we look at knives it seems like everyone's kind of copying each other maybe not in direct design but in similar premises where everyone's making you know a kind of tactical survival knife that isn't really super effective at being tactical and isn't really super effective at being survival but this knife just goes out on its own it takes no inspiration from anyone else it just does what it does and it is sitting over in its own kind of category and i think especially from a business standpoint i'm really impressed with the way mora did this knife and how they carved it into its own little niche and it just sits there at that price point being an excellent bush crafting and survival knife and I love the way that they kept this no frills. I feel like many of the knives in this price point always try to add some glass breaker, some seat belt cutter, or you know, add weird things to the sheath. I love how they kept this knife so basic that it's just good at what it is and it doesn't have any weird frills to it that kind of take away from what it is as a bushcrafting knife and ultimately i've slimmed down my collection by a significant margin of knives but this is one knife that i don't think i'll ever part with and it may not be a front lines user like my crk pacific but this knife will always have a special spot in my heart because of how good it is at just being a pure unadulterated bushcrafting knife that when you need something to perform like this it performs anyways guys that's all for now god bless and i'm out